I'd like to thank the moderators for the opportunity to present today's presentation on NGM 282, a novel variant of FGF19. It significantly reduces hepatic steatosis and key biomarkers of NASH, results of a phase two multi-centered randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial and biopsy-confirmed NASH patients. These are my disclosures. So FGF has multiple biological activities relevant to the pathogenesis of NASH. <clears throat> Working through both R4 and R1 pathways, specifically in R4 where you modulate bile acid synthesis and then through R1 where you work through metabolic pathways. The goal here is to reduce steatosis and reduce lipotoxicity by increasing insulin sensitivity, driving down de novo lipogenesis and improving fatty acid oxidation while at the same time decreasing toxic fatty acids, dropping free cholesterol, bile acids, as well as uh, uh, diacylglycerides and ceramides. The ultimate overarching goal of doing this is to reverse steatohepatitis, reverse hepatocellular toxicity, and decrease fibrogenesis, all of which have been seen in animal models modulating FGF19 directly. So NGM282 is a novel, non-tumorogenic, engineered variant of human FGF19. There are over 150 variants that were screened to identify molecules retaining the metabolic activity of FGF19 while at the same time eliminating the tumorogenic effects. So NGM282 is an engineered variant that's devoid of IL-6 STAT3 activation that's been associated in the past with tumorogenic effects of FGF19. Subsequently, this uh, novel compound was studied in multiple animal models of NASH and consistently showed normalization of LFTs, improvement in all components of the NAFLD activity score, as well as antifibrotic and activity and no, and no tumorogenicity. When you look at humans, this has already been studied in over 275 subjects, including patients with diabetes, PBC, PSC, and NASH. When we look at our study design, <clears throat> this is a phase two study. Uh, it was a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial. 82 subjects were enrolled at 18 sites in both Australia and the United States. The patients had to have biopsy confirmed NASH with a minimum NAFLD activity score of four or more with at least one point in each component. They had to have stage one, two, or three fibrosis, so stage fours were excluded, as were stage zero patients. They had to have a minimum 8% absolute liver fat content by MRI proton density fat fraction. <clears throat> and the serum amino transferases had to be abnormal as defined by an ALT greater than or equal to 19 in females and greater than or equal to 30 in males. The primary endpoint in this study was a decrease in absolute liver fat content of greater than or equal to 5%, which correlates to a 30% relative reduction in proton density fat fraction. When we focus on the baseline demographics and characteristics of our patients, across the board, the patients tended to be Caucasian, female and diabetic, mean BMIs ranged from 33 to 35, and this was a classic NASH pattern with ALT predominance uh, in the 60s and 70s and AST from 40 to 59. The overall mean proton density fat fraction at baseline ranged from 17 to 19.5, and this was a relatively robust group of NASH patients where the mean NAS was 5.1. <clears throat> Over half of our patients had stage two to three fibrosis. When we look at the top line results, NGM 282 treated subjects had a 79% response rate, 34% achieved normal liver fat content, and the definition of response was an absolute decrease in liver fat content greater than 5% at 12 weeks, Normalization of liver fat was defined by a decrease in absolute liver fat to below 5%, again at 12 weeks. What you can see in the graph, blue bars represent response, green bars represent no response. In the placebo group, only 7% responded. The three milligram group, 74% responded. The six milligram group, 85% responded. And when we look at those that actually normalized liver fat, <clears throat> 
over 34%, 34% responded in the treated group compared to no response in the placebo group. When we look at the primary endpoint at both doses, uh, specifically looking at absolute change in liver fat, it was uh, minus 0 0.9 in the placebo group, almost 10 in the 3 milligram group, and almost 12% absolute change in the 6 milligram group. And this was highly statistically significant with both the 3 and the 6 milligram group when compared to placebo. We look at it a slightly different way and now focused on relative change. There was a less than 1% change with placebo, 47% with 3 milligram and 61% with the 6 milligram group. Again, highly statistically significant. And when we look at the percentage of patients that achieved a greater than 30% relative change, it was 89%. These decreases in liver fat strongly correlated with reduction in ALT, AST, and C4 levels. This next slide focuses on the magnitude of effect that we see, and in this case, we're looking at those patients enrolled in the trial that had greater than 20% proton density fat fraction at baseline. And when we look at the change from pre to post treatment in this particular cohort of patients, you see a dramatic effect with the three milligram group of a 13% absolute change, an even greater change in the six milligram group approaching 19%. And you see the ends at the bottom, 8 in the placebo group, 9 in the 3 milligram group, and 12 in the 6 milligram group. Now shifting gears a bit and focusing on ALT, again, I think this is important when we start to talk about treatment response with targeted therapy, not just looking at absolute fat reduction, but also focusing on changes in liver injury. And here, ALT is dramatically decreased uh, with uh, at least a 35-point drop by uh, an absolute change from the 3-milligram group and a 33-point drop in the 6-milligram group. Again, highly significant when compared to placebo. When we look at the percent change, it's 43 and 45 percent compared to placebo of 1 percent. Again, highly significant. When we focus on patients that have higher baseline ALT, and here we're looking at greater than 60 units per liter, you see a rapid and sustained reduction in ALT that, uh, that occurs throughout the time course. The rapidity, you see it as quick as one week, and it's maintained throughout the course of therapy for both the 3 milligram and the 6 milligram group. One of the goals of this trial was to measure whether or not FGF-19 was hitting its target. And one way to do that is to measure C4 activity, which reflects suppression of bile acid synthesis. And here you can see decreases in means uh, C4 levels are certainly reflective of potent C, uh, CYP7A1 inhibition, where you see uh, significant uh, post-dose drops in both the 3 milligram and the 6 milligram cohort. When we begin to look at some of the lipid changes, we see decreases in triglyceride levels consistent again with NGM-282 focused through the uh, R1 mechanism. And you see drops of uh, roughly 40 points for the 3 milligram group and about 43 points for the 6 milligram group, uh, achieving statistical significance with the 6 milligram cohort. Now looking at LDL levels, we do see increased LDL levels with the 3 and the 6 milligram group when compared to placebo, reflecting again potent FGFR4 mediated CYP7A1 inhibition, and this was a statistically significant increase from baseline. There was data presented at this meeting, and I would highlight the abstract presented uh, on Friday that looked at preclinical and clinical data demonstrating a rapid mitigation of these increased LDL levels within two weeks with administra administration of rosuvastatin therapy. This slide illustrates significant changes in both P3 and P and TEMP1, which support potential antifibrotic activity. There was a significant and absolute percentage change in total ELF score for the 3 milligram, 
uh, NGM282 cohort with numeric decreases observed with a 6 milligram cohort, and uh, the, there were no significant changes observed in hyaluronic acid, which was also a component of the ELF score. When we focus on treatment emergent adverse events, when compared to placebo, both the 3 and the 6 milligram group, you saw mainly GI side effects in the form of loose stools and increased frequency of stools, as well as some abdominal discomfort and nausea. There was also injection site reactions that were mainly confined to erythema and some pruritus at the site of injection. The vast majority of the treatment emergent adverse events were grade 1. There was one serious adverse event reported during the study. This was a case of acute pancreatitis that was felt by the principal investigator to be possibly related to study drug. But overall, the adverse event profile is predictable and consistent with other study populations. We focus on uh, changes in key safety and tolerability parameters. It supports continued development of NGM-282 and non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. There were no significant changes in fasting blood glucose or insulin, no evidence of renal, hepatic, or hematologic toxicity. Furthermore, there was no evidence of steatorrhea or malabsorption secondary to decreased bile acid synthesis. There were no detection of neutralizing antibodies to NGM-282, no evidence of drug-induced pruritus. There was significant weight reduction seen with the 6 milligram versus the placebo, but not at the 3 milligram dose. And the decreases in liver fat content appear to be independent of weight loss. So in summary, the primary endpoint was met in almost 80% of NGM-282 treated subjects, with over one-third of subjects completely normalizing liver fat content on proton density fat fraction. There were significant and rapid reductions in multiple markers that are relevant to the resolution of NASH and improvement in fibrosis. No significant difference between 3 mg and 6 mg doses in the key efficacy parameters. However, some differences in tolerability were noted. Adverse event profile is consistent with other NGM-282 treated study populations. And further clinical studies are ongoing to evaluate lower doses of NGM-282 and the concomitant use of statins to mitigate LDL. These data strongly support continued development in non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. I would like to acknowledge our fellow uh, collaborators in this study, in both uh, Australia and the United States, as well as uh, NGM Bio. Thank you very much.